doing it modeling. If my hair doesn't stop trying to pull my eyelashes out, I'm gonna show it who's off. It's a vibe, that's a vibe. Oh, it's a vibe, yeah, yeah. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk to you about my hair, what's changed, color, products, routines, you name it, I wanna talk about it. I'm also gonna do a length check, which I've never done before, so hopefully it's not, like hopefully it's what you want. My assumption is that you literally just pull the piece of hair and measure it, so that's what I'm gonna do, but we'll get to it. So I do wanna talk about length because as my hair, I said this in one of my last videos, but I started noticing that as my hair was getting longer in a stretched state, it was having more shrinkage, which I just felt was so weird. But somebody mentioned in a comment, maybe it's just because your hair is healthier than it's ever been, maybe that's why you're getting shrinkage. And so I kind of feel like maybe that has something to do with it. But it was frustrating because my hair would be like 14 inches long, and then when I would have it in a wash and go, which is how I always wear my hair, just my curly hair routine, it would literally be just this, which is like my first layer. And so now it's a little more long because I'm doing my hair and stretching it intentionally. And I don't know why, but I always have to have one side back. I think it's just from like the uneven hair days. I just got used to it. But now my hair is a little bit longer while it's um, because of the new routine that I've been doing. But I just have been dealing with that and it's like probably been the most between that and single strand knots, it's like I can't find a happy medium. <laughs> it kind of just seemed like every single month my hair was getting shorter and shorter and people were starting to ask in the comments if I cut my hair even more. My mom even asked if I got a haircut and it just looked like I got a haircut. But I would pull a piece down and I would show people, no, my hair is still as long as it was, if not a little bit longer, it's just, shrinking a lot more. So because of that, I needed to find a new way to do my hair. And you guys saw that I recently did a dry wash and go, and that's what I have been doing since that video. But more importantly, because my hair was taking, because of the length, it was taking so long for my hair to dry. And a diffusing session that used to take an hour was no longer taking an hour. I got a hooded dryer, a real one, one that not like, I mean, there's not like fake ones, but not one that like goes over your head that you tie, but an actual legit hooded dryer that stands on its own where you don't have to use your hands. I was super excited. I'm still using it for like different stuff. I'm just not using it for my wash and goes. And literally I was under there for an hour and I still had to diffuse because my hair down here was still wet. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? So I still love that hooded dryer and I use it for when I wanna like dry my hair a little bit faster before I do my wash and go or when I wanna do my deep conditioners or whatever. But had I known that's the only thing I was really gonna be using it for, I would not have bought it. But since I have it, it, I still think it was a good investment. I just think that like putting the time and the energy into doing the research of like which is a really good one might not have happened. Had I known that's all I was gonna use it for. So I don't wanna return it, I wanna keep it, I just never would've went through that process. Whatever. The length was driving me crazy. I was contemplating cutting my hair, <clears throat> like really short, like really, really short. So what I did was I pulled out all my old photos and I looked at myself with short hair and I was like, oh, this is cute. Oh, this is cute. Oh, I remember this time in my life when I was dealing with this, this, and this with my hair and I hated the fact that it never touched my shoulders and when I moved my head, it was like a clear cut. I started thinking of all these problems, not problems, but like just things I didn't like about having short hair. Also, my hair was unhealthy, but regardless, the point is, is I, I, I pulled out some of those old photos and looked at myself and compared and contrasted and I thought, I just need to suck it up and start changing things in my routine that I know are taking me longer or making this process more difficult. So it wasn't really the fact that I actually wanted a haircut, it was just that I wanted hair that was easier to manage. So that's why I started researching all this stuff because I was like, you know, my YouTube channel like came to like a dead halt. How many times did I just say the word like? But it did, it just came to a halt and I didn't know what the heck I was doing with my hair. Everything was taking me too long. I was really frustrated with it and every time I did my hair, I was like, I hate this. Next section, I hate this. Next section, I hate this. So I wasn't happy with what I was doing and I wasn't, like I was bored with everything. I was bored with the cut, the color, the length, the styling, it just all was so like, snooze fest. Then I knew I needed to change some stuff. Um, so I am 
Glad I didn't cut my hair. I don't want to cut my hair. I like it longer, but I got really irritated with the length because of the fact that I wasn't accepting the fact that I needed to change things. Also, I took a trip to Mexico recently. I just went to Cabo San Lucas and I had literally the best time I've ever had in life doing anything at all, like at all. And my number one goal was to not concern myself with my hair on the trip. Like do whatever you want. Don't be afraid to get it wet. Don't be afraid to get it dirty. Don't be afraid to wash it. Don't be afraid that you're gonna have to spend a lot of time on it. Just have fun. And I know that that's so weird but i've always said that like natural hair is a lifestyle change and when you're on vacation that is something you need to think about so i have a product in here that i was using while i was on vacation that i hated and i wish i never would have brought it with me but that's okay life moves on goes on but let's keep talking about length for like two seconds because i want to do my length check it's also been difficult for me to sleep with my hair because i've just been trying so many different methods of how to wrap my hair and um, there's a couple methods that work, just putting it in a bun, a loose bun on the top of my head and tying my scarf around all of it, or just putting my hair up in a loose bun and then putting my scarf around my head like a headband and then sleeping on a satin pillowcase, um, sticking it in the low bun, doing the low braid that you guys saw me do. I'm just right now in the middle of like playing with what works best. All right, so I'm gonna grab a piece of hair back here. So is this how I, I, I have never done this before. So I hope, I guess I could have done some research, but I feel like I've seen some of these a long time ago. So the top of this is touching my scalp. Yes, this is pink because yes, it's from Victoria's Secret because yes, I worked there for like two years and yes, I kept it. <laughs> so this is the back of my head and we are at, I think a little over 16 inches. So that's kind of crazy. Maybe I can do a piece from, let's just do the top. At the top, we are just at 16. I would say more so 15 and a half, just cause that hair is so like thin at the bottom that it just doesn't count in length, I think, when it's like stretched. Some of you are probably like, girl, it counts. <laughs> it hit the 16, it counts. Um, let's do bangs. Although bangs I don't really care about because like I want them to be short. I'm also not stretching my hair, I don't think, as much as I sh like could be, but I don't want to really ruin my curl pattern. Where are we? What is going on? First of all, Lacey, get it together. Hair in front. Where's it at? The seven. I would say seven. Can you see that? I would say seven. Also, that feels like a single strand knot. <laughs> because it is. Okay, and then let's do, so that was 16, 15, 14. Oh, that's funny. That's like all an inch difference. My cats are fighting. Should we go, let's like find a random hair in here. <laughs> I don't think this is how you're supposed to do this. It's how I'm doing it, okay? All right, so this is like, from the side. Where are we? Is that a 16? That's a 16. In a quarter? No, just 16. The fact that I have hair on my head that is 16 inches is weird. I can just remember looking for extensions when I was younger and like 14 to 16 inches was like what I wanted. And now I'm like, well surpassing those. If you have extensions um, and you don't use them or you just have them in general, I would recommend, sorry, I'm trying to like resituate. You know what I'm saying? I would recommend keeping those because once your hair starts growing and just seeing the fact that it's like literally at this point the same length as you are, who just jumped from what counter is what I wanna know. Keep those extensions because it's gonna be really cool to see the difference. My curly hair extensions at this point are shorter than my natural hair. Color, let's talk about color. Let's talk about it. You guys know a while back, I don't know when, I'll put it like sometime around date down here, but you guys know that I stripped the black out of my hair. I've had black hair for a really long time. I always went between my natural brown then I went to like this soft black Shea Moisture color and then I was like, it was fading very quickly and so I just went straight up jet black. 
and I was dyeing my hair a lot um, because it just was fading and I wouldn't always dye my whole head but like sometimes you just wanted to get like that fresh color going so you would dye your whole head but like you wouldn't tell anyone because like you knew people were gonna say why whatever so I stripped all the black out of my hair and I used this kit Right here, sorry my nails are crusty, but this is a Pravana artificial hair color extractor combo set. So even just opening this box, it stinks so bad. Rotten eggs, hands down, well, it's more like sulfur. It just smells like sulfur. I would, I mean, but sulfur smells like rotten eggs. So it comes with your, and I'm just trying to get the bottle right. Part one, artificial hair color extractor. Part two, artificial hair color extractors extractor so i'm pretty sure you just mix equal parts of this and i have like mixing bowls and hair dye brushes and stuff like that yeah i believe this you use just equal parts of both but whatever you do read the directions because it like trust that more than me right like read the directions i would hope so this kind of got me to i took my color out and i felt like it then did like a little more like it kind of made my hair um like auburn-ish, but that faded back to just like a normal dark brown color that I had naturally. So um, it kind of gave me a funky color at first and then it just left me with whatever was actually supposed to be underneath, which was my brown, which is this color up here. The third thing it comes with is the Pravana um, Detox Clarifying Shampoo. So this is the third thing. And I'm pretty, I believe you're actually supposed to shampoo for like five minutes straight because that's what's really gonna take out all of the color. Um, not the color, but the product. And that was hard for me to, to shampoo for five minutes. So don't do this in the shower. Do it over the sink or over the tub and then just kind of shampoo like above the sink or whatever because just wasting that water for five minutes just don't do it okay so i wanted to make sure that i was splitting up my time between all of these processes because i didn't want to do it all in a weekend or like a month so i used that to extract my color and then i i knew i was going to go lighter in general so i did and i used i used the pravana pure light power lightener and at first i was getting like the really small packages of this and then I decided to get the bigger ones and I use the cream developer by Pravana again volume 20 the reason why I use Pravana is because I know that it's a really good brand sorry it's throwing off the, the lighting I know it's a really good brand and I also read so many reviews about it being some of the most gentle bleach that there is so that's why I decided to use Pravana I also have a, a ion color brilliance toner that I haven't used yet because I'm, I'm kind of just enjoying this like brassiness that I've got going on so I haven't used a toner yet I obviously know I'll need a little bit more than this like maybe times three but whatever I wanted to use a 20 developer because I know that it's slow enough that I can continue to check on it and not be um, concerned about it lifting so quickly. Especially with your first time bleaching, going through all by yourself, you wanna make sure that you are giving yourself enough time and that the hair color will come out just like some, somewhat even, right? I mean, you want it to be even, but for me, I didn't care about even. Like down here, it's a little bit lighter because um, I left that on a little bit longer than up here. So work on the section that you want to be lightest first don't forget that if you are going to bleach your near your roots that is going to light up very quickly just because of the fact that there is the heat coming from your head it always lightens quicker so just think about that i didn't have to worry about that because i didn't do my roots like i wanted it to look like this so just saying so the first time i think i left it on 10 minutes and this was way after i extracted the color out of my hair left it on for about 10 minutes the first time i used tin foil um I don't know why, I think I just thought I was supposed to. The second time that I bleached my hair, I did not use tin foil. So the first time I, by the way, everything I did on my hair, I did on my extensions first. I dyed my extensions black a long time ago when I dyed my hair black. And then I extracted the color from them the same, before I did my own hair. Then I bleached them the first time before I did my own hair. Then I bleached it the second time before I did my own hair because I wanted to see what it was going to turn out like, how dry it was going to feel, all that kind of stuff. So the first time I bleached my hair, my hair, and the first time I extracted the color out of it, or the only time, it was not dry at all. I was so thankful. I was so worried about my curl pattern. 
and everything was fine. And then I kind of had this like nice auburn color again and when I was in the sun, it was very light and I loved it. Um, but I knew I wanted to go lighter. So about a month after I bleached it the first time, I bleached it the second time, which is what you're looking at right now. So everything is much lighter than what it was and I absolutely love it. I do not regret it at all. I was so, 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 so scared to do it and I'm so glad I did. This time I didn't, the second time, I did not use tin foil so that I could watch it and I went up a little higher than I did the first time with the bleach so that whatever was on the ends would hopefully be a little bit lighter than kind of what was in here and then this would be the darkest so that it was a little bit of an ombre effect. I don't know if it really worked out that way, but I'm okay with it. And this is just how it looks. And I don't mind it at all. I actually love it. So I worked on one half first and I split that into, so I was working in quarters obviously, but I would do one whole process on one side, wash it out, deep condition, wash it out. And then I would do the whole process on the second side. So it was a very long day for me, but I knew I wanted to take my time. That's because I wasn't gonna do this side, have it sit for 10 minutes, do this side and have it sit for 10 minutes. I didn't know how all that was gonna work. So I just wanted to do this side, let it sit for 10 minutes, wash it out, do what I need to do. Then do this side, sit for 10 minutes, wash it out, do what I need to do. I'm not, I know I'm not gonna work quickly. I know I'm not gonna work efficiently. I know the color's not gonna be even because I've never done this before where I'm lifting two or three shades lighter than my natural hair color. When I wash the bleach out the second time, and by the way, all I did was like paint it on with, with these. So I just made sure that all of the hair was coated and yeah, there was no like highlight action going on, no pulling random pieces. It was literally just all over bleach. When I rinsed it out of my hair, I was beyond terrified because I could feel how dry my hair was. So I did a toning mask, which I don't have with me right now, um, but it was a, it's just like a, pur a blue. So it was a purple Pravana toning mask. So I used that. Then I did a protein treatment directly after that. Then I did a deep conditioner and I left it in my hair for quite some time. So I did that on both halves as I moved through and then I did my normal curly hair routine and I let it completely air dry. I didn't want to use any heat. I was really scared. I could feel how dry my hair was and I just was like, at that moment I was literally thinking about me having to do this whole like natural hair transitioning all over again. I literally was like, I ruined my hair. And I didn't, I this is so stupid. Maybe it's not, but I didn't want to fall asleep because I have very vivid, realistic dreams. And I, it's whatever I'm thinking about that day. Typically I had, a, I was afraid that I was going to have a dream that all of my hair was going to melt off. Like that literally is what I was afraid of. Didn't have that dream. Haven't had that dream. So we're good because I usually like it's so real to me and I wake up and I'm like panicking. Did my curly hair routine as normal, air dried and um, not as normal. I, well, it was a little more wet than I do normally. I could feel that my hair was starting to dry faster and like the water was <laughs> leaving my hair faster. And I was like, okay, okay, this is what we're gonna have to work with from now until who knows when your hair is now dry, it feels like straw. And I think I was just freaking myself out. Like I literally just bleached my hair. So yeah, it's gonna feel dry, which I was expecting. But I mean, as time moves on and as time has moved on, my hair has become so much more soft. I've been very careful with what I've put in it, with how much heat that I've been using. And I just think I was psyching myself out. Like I am nowhere near platinum blonde. I've gone two or three shades lighter. I need to relax a little bit. Like life is gonna be okay. And the reason why I decided to bleach it the second time, obviously I wanted to go lighter, but I had this moment where I was thinking, you know what, you keep talking about it, and I'm a very indecisive person, so for me to make a decision is a really big deal. <laughs> and I'm also really hard on myself, so I know that if I fudge up anywhere, I'm never gonna stop blaming myself. So the fact that I just went for it and did it is a big deal. And I thought, you keep complaining about your hair, and the way it looks and the color and all this kind of stuff, why not just do it? 
right? Like I was contemplating cutting my hair, I didn't want it anymore, but then I was so scared when I was bleaching it. So it's like, what do you want? Do you actually want to experiment and like do something fun? Because you're just complaining about it and you want to cut it anyway. So I kind of just, I don't know, I wanted to step outside of my comfort zone and just do it. The first time I did my curly hair routine after I bleached it, I think it lasted just a few days. And I thought, okay, well that's just my reality now. I'm just gonna have to redo it every few days. And that's how my hair is in the summer right now anyway, so I was like fine with that. But then I did it, my curly hair routine, like the second and the third time, and it, it's just normal. It really is just normal. I think I have a curl back here that is altered a little bit from the bleach, and I already cut it. And then there was another curl, I think somewhere up front that you can't really see, but when it's wet, you can totally see it. So you can see, so here's my color right like it's not there's like there were no professional hands in my hair because i don't trust anybody that's not to throw shade i've just been jaded too many times so sorry this is what the back looks like so in here is darker you can see i didn't go near my roots kind of like the top and then this is Hair products have changed just a little bit because of this and like just knowing that I need to get more moisture in. So I have a few new things I wanna share with you. First, I wanna talk about the two products that I've got that I just don't want anything to do with, but I'm gonna use them up for different things anyway. The OGX conditioner, this is healing and vitamin. Normally they have like some sort of other name. Oh, duh, vitamin E, hello, the big, purple pink E right in front of my face. So this is what I brought when I was in Mexico. Absolutely worthless. I should have known, I mean, worthless for my hair. I should have known that um, bringing a new product on vacation that you've never tried before is like a no-no. It's kind of like getting your hair cut or colored before your wedding. It's like, just stick with what you know before, like you don't have it anymore or like you're stuck with those memories. Not really the same thing, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um, what's nice about this is I'll just use it as like a shaving cream because I always use conditioner to shave instead of shaving cream or soap. I just feel like it's more moisturizing. So not a complete loss. I mean, I'm still gonna use it, but it didn't spread very easily. It didn't make my detangling process any easier. I mean, granted, yes, my hair was in chlorine. The weather was drier in Mexico. Okay, I'm gonna, like that, it, and I wasn't drinking a whole lot of water because I, whatever. So that, I mean, that's not fair, but when I, even when I came home and I was using it, I was like, nope, we're done. We are through, you're gonna be used as a shaving cream. So this was a no, and then also the Carol Stoddard hair milk. It says best of beauty from Allure 2013. I don't know who was trying this or who was saying that it was the best of whatever, but I don't, like it. So I used this when I was in the shower and my hair was wet to kind of start brushing it through um, before I came out and used other products and I realized that this wasn't like there was no slip. It, I, it was hard to rub in or not rub in but like move through. It just didn't it didn't make my hair feel like how I wanted it to feel and I thought it would feel really good because of the hair milk cleansing conditioner, like that stuff has got good slip, it's easy to detangle with, but um, not what I got from this. So that's okay. This is, again, is gonna be another thing that I'm just gonna use as a conditioner. I'm not a conditioner, but a shaving cream because I've lost the receipt. And I used, I'm down to here, I've used quite a bit of it. So I feel really, really shady returning something that I've already used a lot of. So we're just gonna use it to shave. It's, it's cool, but I just didn't get a lot of, um, I, it, like my hair did not feel moisturized. The other thing that I bought recently that I was trying was the Coconut Oil Palmer's Hair Milk Smoothie. And this is what I use after my shower, before I put my hair in a towel to let it dry, before I do my wash and go. I put this in afterwards and this was way more soft, way more soft, way softer, whatever. And I thought, okay, maybe it's just because I, like my hair was dry and not wet. So maybe it was like having, like maybe that was working against it. So then I used this one in the shower. No, this hand, oh my gosh. You can feel your hair becoming more moisturized by the second when you put this in your hair. 
I, this is a staple now in my hair routine and it makes my hair so soft. And you guys saw my hair when I did the dry wash and go. Um, and I had just braided it up and let it go. And a lot of you said that my hair looked really good when I took it out of those two cornrows. And this is why this makes my hair so soft. I never want to go without it. And I don't know how I went without it, to be honest. I really just don't want to leave my conditioner in my hair anymore. I just want to see, like I'm start, I'm feeling a little adventurous now that I've lightened my hair. It's like new hair who is. And I want to see what my hair can do with other products, realistically. I just kind of want to play around a little bit. The other new product that I tried is the Giovanni Eco Chic Hair Care. This is the avocado and olive oil ultra moist conditioner. Talk about those long names. This is so good. The reason, and I'm trying different conditioners too because I love the Trader Joe's one, but let's be real, I hate going to the Trader Joe's by my area. It's just the worst to get in and out of. I just don't like it. I don't like going there just for conditioner and like cat food. So I'm trying to see what I can get like all in one trip. This is obviously a little bit more expensive, but it is really it works really really well and i mean if i were thinking money wise definitely would just go with trader joe's but this is a nice switch up and it makes my hair really really soft and i start it at the ends obviously and then i work my way up and then i still detangle with a brush from the bottom up and this just is so amazing. I was like, should I just leave it in my hair? But I wanted to give everything a fair shot, so I wanted to just leave the leave-ins in my hair only. The other new product I'm trying is the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and, mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm not gonna try. It's an on-the-go conditioning hair fragrance. I wanted to try this for a long time, just the hair fragrances in general, because you know, we're always trying to like get our hair to smell like, as good as it can. I don't know, it's just like fresh. Like when I have hair that smells good, I just feel fresh as a damn daisy. I don't know what it is, I don't get it. It's just the truth. So I'm thinking that this is the, the fig that I am smelling in this, but this just smells really romantic and there's this sort of warm, here we go again with me trying to describe it. It's not gonna work. It just smells romantic. It's a little bit more musky and warm than it is like light and fruity. So that's why I picked this one. I just, I love my musky, masculine, warm scents. I just can't get over it. I just need them in my life. This is really conditioning. I think it makes my hair really soft. Sorry if I keep adjusting. I'm sitting on my ankles and it's a habit I'll never break, but it hurts so bad. No sulfates, no parabens, no everything. Basically it has nothing in it. I'm not gonna go down the, I just, I can't pronounce half of these. So it's like, why even try? But I absolutely love this. I put this on over my olive oil and so this is just olive oil and why can't I think of the other oil? Jojoba oil. And it's like one third of jojoba oil and the rest is olive oil. So I spray this on my hair at night, focusing on my ends. And then I put this on my hair at night and I just wrap it up, go to bed. And when I wake up in the morning, my hair smells so good and it's so soft. For a little while, I tried using um, the leave-in conditioner every night to moisturize and seal. My curls just don't play that game. I can't put any, once my hair is in its curly state, I cannot put any other water in it. Otherwise, everything actually just starts coming apart. And there's more frizz and breakage and tangles and things like that. So um, if you feel like you love to moisturize and seal every night, even if your hair is in its naturally curly state, I'm just saying. And then the two products that I always use and I'm still gonna talk about because they saved my hair, I think after I was like, oh, my hair is never gonna come back, is the Mixed Chicks Deep Conditioner. I have nothing in here because I transferred it all to a different container so that I could take this one full of hair gel when I went to Mexico. And that was not enough because of how much I was like getting my hair wet. So there's absolutely nothing in here. It's totally clean and I'm just gonna keep it for future traveling things, but I left this in my hair for a really long time. Mixed Chicks has always been my go-to for the deep conditioner. It's the only thing I've ever tried from their line, to be fair, but it's because it's the only thing that seems reasonably priced, I'm not gonna lie. And then the Eco Styler Gel. So I actually went into the Sally's, not near my house, um, it was at my best friend's house, but I went into that Sally's because I wanted to try the castor oil one and they didn't have it. And I also needed a new gel like the day before because my hair was like, 
one day too far away from the hair routine that should have happened. And um, so I needed to get something and they also didn't have olive oil. So it was either this or like the clear one. And I've never tried that one before. And I know I've tried this. So I went with this one. And this is, uh, this is just the argan oil one. I got it because I knew I've used it before and I know that I like it. So I got this one and I think I'm actually gonna use this one for a while and not the olive oil one. And I'm just, I just scraped the rest of the olive oil one into a smaller container to actually just use for my edges because I feel like right now in the summer, I need a little more hold. And I think I made a mistake for the earlier in the summer by not doing this and not changing it. But I think from now on, when the weather is gonna be humid and I know it's gonna be a little more humid, I'm gonna go with the Eco Styler gel. And not just like your rain humid. Like my hair, for whatever reason, is fine in that like rain humidity when my hair's curly, not when it's straight. But when my hair is in like the heat humidity, I just need like, I, I need more. I need more for my hair products. Summer, Eco Styler, olive oil, every other season. Um, in my next video, I'm gonna do a sort of get ready with me style everyday makeup routine. And I'm gonna talk about YouTube and social media and where I fit into all of that in the teaching world. Some of you might be noticing that I'm not, except that, well, first of all, that my Instagram is not private. It's been for a while, but that I'm not accepting friend requests lately. And I'll, I'll get into that in my next video, but I'm just trying to separate my YouTube life from my professional career life. We'll talk about that, but I just wanted to let you know. So if you have any questions about that, in general, or if you have any questions about teaching, if you have any questions about natural hair, whatever, put those down below because I would like to try to answer some of those in my Get Ready With Me as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much. Even if you don't love me back, I just punched my Eco Styler jaw. And I will see you guys in my next video.